Here I'm wiring in a boom sling uh, wiring harness into my uh, 110 Defender and uh, I was a little bit disappointed uh, in some ways by how this actually uh, works in that uh, when you install it you actually become reliant on a single 40 amp fuse for both uh, main and dip beams which uh, seemed to me to be a step backwards in one respect. Yes you take the high current switching away from the uh, the column switch and switch it to these chunky relays but uh, you've got a single point of failure in that uh, 40 amp fuse. Uh, so a quick look at the uh, circuit diagram provided with the uh, the kit itself showed me that uh, it wouldn't be too difficult to uh, run a second feed so that uh, main and dip beams were fed from uh, separate fused supplies so uh, in my install I'm taking uh, a feed from the alternator which is coming up here and splitting there into a double fuse box on the bulkhead which comes out in the original which is the top cable going to the uh, boom slang wiring harness and then I've added in another feed to the boom slang wiring harness here agreed that uh, black probably wasn't the ideal colour but uh, it's the only cable I had available at this point in time in the uh, in a suitable grade this being a Sunday morning so that comes out uh, at the relay block here and to add in the second uh, connector I had to uh, snip this red cable which is the live link from relay 1 round to relay 2 and I'm then going to uh, make a soldered connection between that cable and my black feed. There's probably not as much copper in this as I would have liked to have seen either to be honest but uh, then maybe I'm a bit of a, a perfectionist in terms of the, the gauge of the cables. The whole idea of this is to reduce the uh, resistance in the cable and get as much current as possible to the uh, to the bulbs and get a, a high output and you know, realistically I'd have liked to have seen a little bit more copper in this uh, this cable but it's better than uh, what was there before to be fair certainly taking the switch the high current switching away from the uh, the column switch is a big plus but you know, some chunkier cables would have been uh, would have been nice and I may well wire up my own loom at uh, some future point but uh, until that day which may not ever happen uh, this is going to be uh, a step up uh, maybe I'm hypersensitive about this uh, I had uh, the uh, column control main light switch file on a defender I had a few years ago when I was uh, on the Outer Hebrides for three months and it failed the night before I was due to catch an early morning ferry leaving me with a, a five mile drive with jury rig lights which uh, didn't give me a very good night's uh, sleep prior to departure. Anyway, I'm just going to solder that up I'll uh, give you a quick shot of that uh, before I uh, wrap the cables up I'll give you an overall view and then come back once the thing is fingers crossed working. Okay, so there's that uh, joint soldered up. Yes, I know the cable colours don't uh, match, but uh, they're a little bit odd anyway. In that uh, the uh, live feed in all of this is uh, is blue, so it's a nice chunky piece of uh, adhesive lined heat shrink to go on there. So I'm just going to shrink that one up. So that's shrunk up 
I tend not to uh, actually shrink the heat shrink over the joint itself, leaving that a little bit of breathing space, but uh, it's nice and tight and you can see the adhesive has uh, squirted out of the end there. If I'm honest, that could have been a smaller piece of heat shrink, but uh, that was the best I had in terms of heat shrink with uh, some uh, adhesive in it, which makes a big difference. Here's the original loom all back together again, with some loom tape to tidy up, and the uh, original heat shrink back on again with some tape over it just to make it all look pretty. And uh, just going down there onto that uh, clip, let's bang it in there and show you that. So that's a view of the, uh, the relay block on a bracket that I made up just using some pre-existing holes on the uh, radiator surround. Tucks the cables quite nicely out of the way of any flying moisture etc. And then the, uh, the loom which is going round to the uh, driver's side uh, headlamp assembly is uh, running underneath the uh, surround for the uh, for the radiator and across to the other lamp housing. So this is my revised earth. That's uh, an M8 bolt which is going uh, straight into one of the uh, mounting bolts for what would be the uh, cradle, or what is the cradle for the uh, for an aircon pump on uh, models where that's fitted? So uh, I've got an earth now which is coming straight off the engine block in effect, and there's two cables there, two there. One comes up to the headlight here, the other one goes into the loom which goes across the top of the radiator shroud and across over to the other side and uh, effectively takes uh, both the uh, headlight and the uh, dipped main beam uh, straight to the uh, engine block for an earth. So I think that's better than the uh, option that was suggested by the uh, by the loom itself, the uh, boom slang loom. So kind of in summary I've taken a feed from the uh, from the alternator, which is down here under the uh, under the cover. It runs along with the rest of the main engine loom along behind the engine. The uh, the main loom goes across the top of the gearbox and into the battery compartment in the uh, passenger side of the uh, Land Rover. My loom goes up the bulkhead to a two-way fuse box there where you can see the green and then it splits and there's a feed via one fuse for main beam and the second fuse for dip beam via the mod I talked about uh, earlier by uh, cutting the uh, main sorry by cutting the main line that uh, the fused 12 volt line that goes to the uh, the two relays at that point that I indicated where it loops from one relay to the other. So having done all that, sorry about the passing tractor, so having done all that and taking really quite a long time, on balance I think uh, with what I've learned I would probably not, well, I wouldn't do this again, I'd buy myself a couple of relays and some heavy duty cable and uh, make my own loom up and uh, use uh, some new headlight connectors and uh, run the uh, loom down each of the wings rather than across the top of the uh, radiator shroud. So I think it would be uh, tidier and uh, more factory. So uh, not difficult to do. I think the only other thing I'm going to do is uh, stick a note in the, uh, the handbook uh, saying that the uh, wiring loom has been modified and that uh, the uh, original switches in the fuse box uh, on the gearbox tunnel uh, now are uh, merely supplying the feed to the uh, the switch which operates the the new relays. So technically, those uh, those fuses could be downrated, but uh, I'm not going to do that. I quite like the idea that uh, if I have an issue with this, uh, I can uh, just pull the uh, boom slang plugs off the back of the headlamps and refit the originals and. Uh, I've got a plan B. 
So, pays your money, takes your choice. As I said earlier, the uh, Boomsang relay does a good job in uh, pulling uh, all the heavy switching current away from the uh, main lighting switch on the steering column, but uh, you know, I think I think it's a bit of a compromise. It's good in as far as it goes, but uh, without a great deal of effort, it, it could have gone a little bit further.